everyone. Welcome to my channel, Budget for Success. Woo! <laughs> I am so glad you're here for part four of this wonderful series that we've been doing, Budgeting Tips and Tricks for Retirement and Financial Freedom. Yes, this is part four. So if you did not see the one through three video, please stop, find the links in this video and go watch the videos one through three because these are going in sequential order. Things are gonna make more sense when you watch them one at a time. And the things that we're gonna discuss today will come to light once you've seen all the videos. Also, the other benefit, if you go back and watch all the videos and put a like and comment, leave a comment in the YouTube, um, video so we can upset the YouTube algorithm and they can start, you know, pushing this video out there. But I also want you to do it because it's going to qualify you for number one, receiving the tools that I'm going to share with you in this video and the next video, um, as well as the net worth tool that I've already shown you. But then also you get a free coaching call for 30 minutes where I'm going to coach you and help you implement the, this, the uh, tools that I'm sharing with you. Because we all know that, you know, sometimes we need that push to actually sit down and look at our finances in a holistic view. So I'm here to help coach you into doing that. All right. So we want to get started, but I just want you to know that this is just the beginning. I have this brilliant series rolling and I just got to get it out. And thanks to my wonderful brother-in-law who came up with the term Money Smart Tuesdays, I decided this is it. Money Smart Tuesdays. That's what we're going to be talking about, our Money Smart Tuesdays. That's right. So tune in, tune in, tune in. This is just the beginning. We're going to dive deep. And I'm even going to do some lives so that you can ask me questions and and we can have a Q&A session, but we're going to get smart with our money. Yes, we are. So let's kind of do a quick recap because I don't want to delay this. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look at the presentation and do a quick recap of what we've shared so far. So let's see here. Number one, we did step one, which was introductions. And number two, oh, sorry. And number two, we looked at the big financial picture. And that was a good eye opener for myself. I hope it was for you if you've had time to do your net worth analysis. If not, don't worry. At the end of the series, I will send you the spreadsheet and we'll jump on a coaching call and we will look at the big picture. Step three is drilling down into the details. Boy, we talked about let's look at your spending patterns. Let's look at how you spend money on a yearly basis, not just weekly or monthly but yearly, because that's sometimes very sobering when you look at your finances at a year. And today it's time to get balanced. We got to get balanced. So again, I talked about who I am, things that I have done over the years, and we moved on and talked about the big picture, how to evaluate our current financial situation. Let's look at the value of our assets. Let's look at everything that we owe and look at our spending patterns. And most importantly, let's kind of look at some sources of income. Where can we have additional income coming through? I was transparent. I showed you my net worth from 2017 to 2024 um, to show the progress that has been made, but we're still making progress because we're not done. We are going to increase our net worth. Yes, we are. And then we wanted to look at drilling down into the details. Where are we spending our money? Let's get honest. This is one of those get honest with yourself and let's really look at where our money is going. And so I showed you some of the areas that I found, which were a little bit of like, oh my goodness, when I looked at my <laughs> expenses for the year. And so I shared with you some ideas and things that I um, uh, learned from doing this experience. So I hope that this is something that you have done as well. If not, don't worry at the end of the series, we're gonna jump on a coach call and we're gonna do that. So now it's just time to balance things out. Let's look at how, where we are right now with our assets. Let's look at all of our savings accounts. So I have a spreadsheet that I've created that helps you 
look at an analysis <laughs> of where you are and where you would like to be, okay? And so this is a different way of analyzing your savings. Many people say, yeah, I've got about 30 grand in savings, I'm good. Or I have 100 grand in savings, I'm good. But do you know you're good? Really? Have you given every money that you have, every dollar that you have an assignment? That's what large businesses do. That's what cities do. All of their money is designated and it has an assignment. And I've learned from experience that's important to do in your own household. So this is a spreadsheet. This is what I, I use to track my um, investments and my savings. So what I learned from working at cities and managing budgets of millions and millions of dollars, if I have a savings account and I say, oh, I've got 30 grand, I'm set. Do you know you're set? Do you really know that that's all that you need was 30 grand in savings? I don't know. Well, the way we determine what budgets um, amounts that cities and government needs is that we look at um, all of the expenses that are out there, things that we need to spend money on. And so in the cash stuffing world, there's what's called sinking funds. So sinking funds are areas where you just need to sink money because you may need it in the future. And they can cover a plethora of categories. And so what I did was I decided that the money that I had in my investments and savings and everything, I needed to account for somewhere in a spreadsheet. I've been doing this for years. I've been managing this for years. I have had a spreadsheet for years that really you know, tells me how much I have in total. Now these numbers are for presentation purposes only. These are not real numbers. Um, but what do I do with those numbers? Nothing. I would just look at it, go up and down, up and down. Well, I had this brilliant idea that I ought to be allocating these amounts to the different sinking funds that I have. And that will tell me whether I really have a sufficient amount of money saved or not. So what I did was um, basically create this spreadsheet. It has the different investment types across the top. If you do the coach call with me, we will customize the spreadsheet to meet the different categories that you have wherever you have money. Um, I will tell you that if you invest in stocks and you're new at investing in stocks, Robinhood is a great platform for new beginners. Um, just having that here. Um, also, uh, if you have a retirement, it's nice to have a retirement that you save pre-tax and one that you save post-tax. That's something I do and something you can consider. Um, I also definitely believe in cash stuffing, so I have cash envelopes. Over time, I will explain to you why cash stuffing is just so important to me and has made a difference um, in my finances, which is really, truly the key that helped me get to some financial freedom. Um, and then, um, of course, CDs are nice if you want to have your money in some steady set money if you can get a good CD rate. Um, and then of course, savings accounts, manage portfolios. Those are awesome. If you have enough money and you can work with a um, investment banker, many of them require a minimum deposit of at least 25K, sometimes more. Um, so this could be a goal for some of you. Some of you that have it, and maybe you already have a managed portfolio, you're gonna have that information here, okay? So any investments or savings that you have, you're gonna have listed in the columns. And then of course we have a goal and then we have sinking funds. What sinking funds should you have? Well, I have a list of sinking funds that I typically use. These are definitely just recommendations. This is my story. So your story is gonna be con completely different, but let's start somewhere, right? So what I did was I put bank balances right here across the bottom. This is the amount of money that is in the bank. Every month, I update this. At the end of the month, I look at how much is in there now. And then I make sure that whatever is in there gets allocated to all these different, what we call sinking funds. And so these are some cool categories that you can consider. Um, these are things that you want to save money for so you don't, number one, have to use a credit card if you need it. Number two, it's peace of mind. It's having money set aside for these categories so that when expense comes up, you can go to this category and you know you have money to pay for it. So here are some different categories 
category so you can consider. Anniversary, birthday, car maintenance is a big one. Um, if you drive a car, you should definitely have a car maintenance account, or you can even have one for saving for a new car. Ever thought about actually paying cash for a new car? <clears throat> and so then we have college, if you have children or you want to go back to college, a uh, cruise, I put that there. That's mine because I cruise. Like if I'm not on a cruise, I'm planning for a cruise. <laughs> That's just how it is because I love to cruise. So it's either I'm there on the cruise or I'm planning. So I have to have that as a sinking fund. I call this debt retirement. You can call it what you want, but it's money you want to save that you're going to take that lump sum amount and just pay off a chunk of debt. Um, health. You could have the best health, I have wonderful health insurance, but still I have out-of-pocket out of costs sometimes. So you want to have money set aside for health. Um, household, just if you have a household, whether you own it, rent it, whatever, um, you still have expenses that you may incur for maintaining that household. Nice to have money set aside for that. Uh, your spouse, <clears throat> it could be significant other, uh, children, long-term investments. Um, I have mom retirement because it's my spreadsheet. <clears throat> but for you, you know, it would be whatever, re your retirement. Uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, self-care, so important. I don't care if you're a male or a female, self-care is important. Um, subscriptions, taxes, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I put mine together. Some of you may want to separate them. I put trust attorney here because this was an issue for me. So if you don't have a trust attorney, I encourage everyone to look into it. Um, if you have assets and you want to make sure that those assets get accounted for and distributed when you pass away, it is so important to, to do this exercise. So I was putting, literally seeking money aside for hiring a trust attorney. Vacation, um, Valentine's Day, uh, and year ahead. <clears throat> year ahead, that's a key one. How can we get 12 months ahead? Man, that's awesome. That means at any one point in time, you have a year's worth of your expenditures in savings outside of all these other categories. You have money set aside for everything else and you have a year ahead. <clears throat> so year ahead is just key. Man, can you think of operating knowing that if something happened and you weren't able to generate new income, that you had enough money to last a whole year? That would be so awesome. And so each of these categories should have a goal. And so I have here in my little spreadsheet, I did all this work ahead of time, right? So we didn't have to waste time entering information. So here are some goal amounts. That's the amount I'd love to have. You know, I'm just putting it out there. These are just numbers, guys. These aren't real, they're just numbers. Um, I'd love to have a million in retirement. I'm not going to wait to have them. I've already retired and I didn't have a million. You know why I retired? Because I have to live. <laughs> I wanted to live, but I had sufficient funds set aside for my financial freedom. Um, but I still have a goal of generating a million in retirement. Um, I can still do that. I can still put that goal out there. So anyway, you have your goal here and now you wanna figure out how far am I? How can I get there? So let's see, we have $6,000 in savings. Where do we want to allocate that money? And so I just ran through some amounts. Is there a secret to this? No, absolutely not. The secret is that you actually just do it. <laughs> that you actually do it. So I came up with where to allocate the money <clears throat> from the different, um, from the amount of $6,000. So there's $6,000 in the account and this is where it's allocated. So if I wanted to spend birthday money of $50, I could take it out of the savings account. Here's what's key. What's in your savings is money that you will need in the near future, CDs, they're locked in, right? They may be locked in for a year, nine months, et cetera. Managed portfolio. You don't want to take money in and out of your managed portfolio. So the amounts that you save here are amounts that you won't need for a while. Robinhood. If you have stocks, you don't want to cash a stock out every time 
um, you need money unless you bought that stock specifically for a sinking fund. I have done that. I have invested in stocks specifically for my cruise and I made a lot of money. And as soon as that stock looked funny, I got out and I took that money. I was like, that's for my cruise. So <clears throat> that would be more long-term. Obviously retirement is very long-term and your cash envelopes are for near term, next 30 days, 60 days that you need to spend the money. So that's how you can decide how much goes in those different categories. When will you need the money? <laughs> so I'm just gonna copy all of the amounts here. I'll come back to this spreadsheet. The goal is at the bottom, everything is zero. There's no variances. Oh, we'll delete that, we don't need that. <clears throat> so that means that everything is accounted for. This is the money that's in the bank and this is the money you have allocated and they're equal and that's perfect. And so what it means over here now is for anniversary, we have a goal of 5,000, but we have 2,000 allocated. So we still need to save, <clears throat> we have 2020. So we still need to save $2,980. So that's how much is left. Oh, we still got to put some money aside. <clears throat> we thought we were set because we had $285,000 saved. So when we wanted to spend 5,000 in anniversary, we had it because we had, um, you know, a total of, even if we didn't include retirement, we could say we had a total of, 50, this is $59,000 right here. So we could say, well, we have 59,000. When, when the anniversary comes and we spend 5,000, we still have money left. Yeah, but what about all these other expenditures that you should be saving for? So do you really have enough in retirement? No, you don't. Um, car maintenance, you have a goal of five grand, you have three grand saved, great. If the car broke down, you'd have money in Robinhood. You could call Robinhood, put up, cash the stock, and, 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 and there you go. You could pay for the, you know, the car maintenance that you didn't anticipate, all right? But your goal is five grand, you still have two grand to go. A college fund, you wanted a goal of 10,000, 10, $10,000. Well, that's not going to get your child very far, but, you know, everybody has different systems, right? You know, our system was we're going to save up a chunk of money for our kids. When they graduate, they get that chunk of money and we hope that they use it wisely. We educate them, we teach them on it. Um, but other than that, they're, they need to figure their college expenses out. The other good thing for us was each of our kids, if they went to a, Cal a UC system school or a Cal State school, their tuition was paid for because of my husband's service. Um, and so <clears throat> the CalVet program allows them to go to college without having to pay tuition. Um, so we were just saving money. That may not be the scenario you have. You may need to save a lot more money for college. So you need to put the number that works for you. And then you could say, how much of that savings do you want to allocate to the college? And then you would know whether you still have more to go. Um, debt retirement, this really should be a revolving number. Once you save up the goal, then you pay the debt down and you start all over again. The reason that I use this strategy of saving money and then paying the lump sum in debt, and I don't just keep paying huge amounts to debt every month, is because, well, number one, I don't have any debt that's accruing interest right now, except for one item um, that uh, we're paying on, and it's a payment plan, and it's, it's interest-free as well. Okay, I don't have any debt that's um, accruing interest right now, because we're on an interest-free program with the credit card, and we have another debt that's interest-free so that's one reason I save money up. So if you're able to convert your money into interest-free programs, great. Do it. You know, it's a decision, right? Something you can look at. Um, if you don't and you're paying interest, I still maintain that it is important to put money aside for savings. Because if you don't have all your goals met, you need more money saved, and I focus more on savings than retiring debt. That debt will be there. So I set up my debt payment plan, how much I pay a month for debt, and I pay it. 
automatically. But then I save because if something happens and an emergency occurs and I need cash and I have to go to this savings to pay for that emergency because it was huge and it was significant and I need to go to savings versus charging it and acquiring more debt and paying more interest, I'm going to go to savings. So I will always emphasize savings for my financial plan. Savings, 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 savings. All my money goes to savings. And then once a year, I pay a huge chunk to pay the, the debt down and get the debt paid off. And mine is before the interest kicks in. <laughs> all right. And so these are all the goal amounts. And then this is how much you have. And then this is how much you need to reach your goals. So now what you do that you know how much you still need to save, you don't go get overwhelmed over it. Now you do some fun savings challenges. And so I'm going to do another video on savings challenges and why they work, why I do them. I'm going to show you some savings challenges that you can do online that I've created that just makes it fun to save money. But finding a way that excites you to save money helps you make that financial position <clears throat> on your spreadsheet closer to your goal. Anything that you can do to help you save money. I do penny challenges. So any change that we get from the store, my whole family knows, save your change. They bring me the change. They crack, they crack up. They're like, mom, we have plenty of money. Why are you saving change? Save the change, okay? Save your change, all your change, all the dollars when I go to the store and I get dollars back and change, that all comes home and it gets saved. Yes, it does. Because I believe that pennies make dollars. <laughs> yes, they do. And that dollars just make sense to me. <laughs> so anyway, that is my lesson for, four, which, uh, for step four, which is to take a look at all of your assets and give it an assignment. Do it today. Give it an assignment. Get excited about it. Come up with some sinking funds that you should have that you didn't think about. Um, there may be those of you who are in the cash stuffing community. You guys, I already got sinking funds. I got too many sinking funds. Maybe you can consolidate some of your sinking funds because sometimes when you have your money spread out too much, it gets overwhelming. Think about putting some of those categories together, lump them up so that you don't have so many categories, put them together, and then you have a larger amount saved for that category. You're like, okay, okay, I put some of these expenses all into one, and now I got a nice chunk of change for that category. That works for me. So that's something to look at. But whatever you do, get it all in a, to a spreadsheet, whether you do it in writing or use Excel, but do it now. Give every dollar that you have an assignment so that you know that you don't overspend. And you also have a new goal in mind. You have no, we're new vision, new ideas. You're like, oh my gosh, I got so much more money to save. And then you're going to have fun saving it because you're going to come back to Money Smart Tuesdays. And I'm going to show you how to have money, have fun saving money. All right. That's it for step four. Step five is a doozy. We're going to dig into the budget. Yes, yes, yes. Zero-based budgeting. I did it for 20 years in government. <laughs> I got zero-based budgeting. We're going to talk about that. Step five. So I'll see you next Tuesday. For all, Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye for now. Love you guys.